What's good, YouTubes? Steph here, and welcome to Theta Space. It's been about three weeks since I posted a Wednesday video, but here I am now to talk about my favorite cover songs. Right, so there are some cover versions of songs that overshadow the original and become the definitive version of that song. Uh, for example, if I were to say R-E-S-P-E-C-T, I'd bet real money that the first person you think of is not Otis Redding. And even if it was, enough other people would have said Aretha Franklin that I would still come out comfortably ahead. There are a couple of those kind of covers on my list, uh, even at least one that just about everybody would agree qualifies in that class. Some others, though, well, maybe not better than or even equal to the original, are still fine performances in their own right, and overall, for one reason or another, I would rather listen to the cover version of every song on my list. A few that didn't make the list, uh, this is a top ten, as I believe I put in the title and thumbnail. Uh, I'll just name them here. There's Cake's cover of Gloria Gaynor's I Will Survive, Aerosmith's Dream On, covered by The Mission UK, and Neil Young's Old Man, covered by Human Drama. And Dweezil Zappa did a cover of the Bee Gees' Stayin' Alive with Donny Osmond on lead vocal. Uh, I read an interview, he said that he wanted to take a lame song and make it cool overnight, and also that Ozzy Osbourne was his first choice of vocalist, but he couldn't get Ozzy, so he got Donny. I wouldn't say he exactly succeeded in his goal, but it's a fun track to listen to, and uh, Mr. Osmond uh, acquits himself well on it. Of the rest of those, uh, I'm a never big Neil Young fan anyway, so Old Man was not a song on my radar, but Human Drama's cover is all right. And uh, while I love the mission, as far as Dream On goes, I'd rather listen to Aerosmith. Okay, so on to my list of favorites. Uh, number 10 is Beware of Darkness by Spock's Beard, a uh, cover of the George Harrison song from his triple LP solo album, All Things Must Pass. I only recently went back and listened to the original, and uh, it's uh, a pretty faithful cover, actually, with uh, the usual Spock's Beard touches, but uh, very recognizable as uh, George Harrison's song, Beware of Darkness. Number nine is... Uh, Rusty Cage, covered by Johnny Cash, the original uh, by Soundgarden on the album Bad Motor Finger. I know uh, Johnny Cash's covers of Hurt by Nine Inch Nails and Personal Jesus by Depeche Mode uh, get all the attention, and not enough love goes to Rusty Cage, but uh, it's the one I like to listen to the most of those three. Number eight, uh, Tarkus by Ars Nova. Ars Nova, for those who don't know, is a uh, Japanese progressive rock band. Originally a trio of three women, led by Keiko Kumagai on keyboards. Later on, their lineup changed, and by their fourth album, The Book of the Dead, they uh, had a man playing bass. Their cover of Tarkus comes from an album, Keyboard Triangle, which they did with another Japanese progressive rock band, Gerard, swapping tracks and covering uh, classic European progressive rock tunes. Ars Nova's Tarkus, the title track of uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer album, comes in at uh, 12 minutes and 19 seconds, and it's the lo longest track on Keyboard's Triangle, but it's only uh, portions of the original 20 minute 44 second Tarkus by Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. It starts with the, the parts titled Eruption and Stones of Years, uh, except where Greg Lakes sings. One of the women just vocalizes the melody without any actual words, and then it skips to uh, either Iconoclast or Manticore, I'm not clear on which. One of those other Keith Emerson organ uh, jams with the rapid notes uh, goes on to uh, Battlefield, which is again not sung but just vocalized, and uh, conclusion kind of based on Aquatarchus and going back into the main sort of theme. It's uh, really good. Uh, it kind of condenses Tarkus down to the essentials. As far as I'm concerned, uh, I think uh, Tarkus itself goes on a little long. So uh, anyway, that's it. Number eight is Tarkus by Ars Nova. Number seven, Highway Star by Metal Church, cover of Deep Purple Song from Machine Head. Uh, I think this was actually the first Metal Church song that I ever heard uh, on the college radio station when I was in high school. Uh, and the time I went to see Metal Church uh, when they were touring The Dark and Metallica was touring Master of Puppets, they uh, played that as the encore. Yeah, really cool. On to number six. Number six is Michael Manring's cover of 
Chick Corea's 500 Miles High uh, from the Return to Forever album, Light as a Feather. Uh, Michael Manring is a, a phenomenal bassist. Uh, and this album also has a solo bass cover of Purple Haze, also a cover of Spirits in the Material World by the Police. But 500 Miles High, like Purple Haze, it's a uh, solo bass piece just on a four-string bass, and uh, it's just absolutely amazing. I think it, it made uh, 500 Miles High one of my absolute favorite songs. He kind of... Uh, stretches out the original song. Uh, he kind of doubles the length of the bars, uh, gives the chord changes some room to breathe. He goes through the chord changes four times and it's a little different every time. The first is kind of an ambient floaty intro sort of thing. Uh, the second he kind of establishes the, the theme and plays the melody. Uh, the third he uh, kind of goes like all uh, uh, drifty and floaty again and the fourth time he just goes hard and uh, it's just an amazing performance. I'm planning on doing uh, some bass covers in the near future uh, and I will uh, I will tell you right now that uh, none of Michael Manring's music is going to be uh, among the bass covers that I'm going to be playing. Number five, uh, Stairway to Heaven, as covered by Frank Zappa's 1988 touring band, the one with the five-piece horn section and the one that didn't complete the tour, but they played this uh, cover of Stairway to Heaven, and among the uh, highlights is Jimmy Page's guitar solo replicated note for note by the five-piece horn section. One of the horn players, I don't remember which one, knew the whole solo and taught it to the rest of the section, and Zappa had the band play it, and it's... Uh, I uh, don't care if I never hear the original again, but I could listen to this one over and over. Right, number four, uh, Astronomy Domine by Voivod, Pink Floyd's song from their very first album, The Piper at the Gates of Dawn, uh, written by Sid Barrett, the late great Sid Barrett. They really do an awesome version of this uh, this song, and uh, Piggy, the late great uh, Dennis Damore, Piggy, their guitar player, plays a solo uh, very much like Sid Barrett's solo on the uh, Omagama live recording of Astronomy Domine. What more can I say? It's uh, Astronomy Domine. Uh, Voivod also also covered another Pink Floyd song, the Nile song from the Moore movie soundtrack on their album The Outer Limits. It's all right, but uh, Astronomy Domine is the one. Uh, number three uh, is the one I think pretty much everybody's going to agree is uh, one of the best cover songs of all time. It is Jimi Hendrix's All Along the Watchtower. Almost kind of a cheat to uh, name this one because pretty much any cover of a Bob Dylan song is going to be better than the original. Like uh, my Aretha Franklin reference before, uh, all along the Watchtower, people are uh, most people will think of Jimi Hendrix uh, before they think of Bob Dylan. Uh, it is just an absolute fire version. Uh, yeah. Number two, uh, Cross-Eyed Mary, Iron Maiden's cover of the Jethro Tull song from Aqualung. Uh, well, uh, I don't think all that many Jethro Tull fans have heard Iron Maiden's cover of Cross-Eyed Mary. Uh, it's kind of a rarity. It was on the 12-inch uh, single of The Trooper, so uh, not a lot of people have heard it, but it uh, absolutely blows the original away. And I love Jethro Tull, but uh, Iron Maiden really owned this song. And now we've reached number one. Number one is uh, by still one of my favorite bands, Yes, and it's their cover of Simon and Garfunkel's America. It was originally released on the Yesterdays album, which was mostly a compilation of songs from the first two albums with Peter Banks as the guitarist and Tony Kaye as the keyboardist. But uh, they also included a new recording of America with the then current lineup of uh, Rick Wakeman on keyboards and Alan White on drums and Steve Howe on guitar. I can't remember the last time I actually heard the studio original because the one I just keep coming back to is the live version on Keys to Ascension Volume 1. Uh, it just absolutely smokes. And uh, it takes a song that honestly I wouldn't be inclined to listen to and uh, makes it into uh, one of my favorite songs ever. So yeah, Yes just uh, really knocked this one out of the park. It's just my top favorite cover song ever. What do you think? What would uh, your favorites be? Did I leave any glaring omissions off the list? Uh, let me know in the comments. Also, smash like if you up. Hit subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. And uh, hopefully I will be back next Wednesday with another video. I won't wait another 
three weeks or whatever. Um, currently working on a uh, base cover of Holy Diver. Uh, I was gonna do Money by Pink Floyd, but uh, that one needs a little more work. Uh, I haven't played it in a really long time, but uh, Holy Diver is uh, simpler, but it's also just fun as hell to play. So uh, that's what's probably gonna come up next week. Uh, until then, Steph out. Peace.